So, uh, this is a tutorial on DocFX. Uh, there's a lot of questions being asked on uh, Twitter, on our Docs uh, feedback channel about what is DocFX, how can I use it myself? So this is kind of my attempt at showing what DocFX is and how easy it is to deploy. I'm using a Mac, so this is going to be a tutorial that leverages everything that's installed on your Mac. Uh, almost out of the box, uh, since you still have to install some dependencies, but let's start. So less talking, more doing. Um, I'm going to Bing. You can, of course, use your search engine of choice, uh, but I'm just going to search for the DocFX URL. So this is the first thing that pops up is the DocFX website. Uh, this should be your starting point. Really, there is plenty of documentation there. We have the specifications, tutorials, API docs, templates and plugins. Everything you need technically should be there. And if it's not, just feel free to ask me and I'll be more than happy to help. So what we need to do first is download it. So I'm going to go ahead and click download latest. It will take us to GitHub and it looks like version 237. Sounds good enough. I'm going to go ahead and download this. I'm going to save it. And once it downloads, we'll need to go to that folder see and open it. All right, so we have the docfx folder. Uh, inside the docfx folder, there's a bunch of managed assemblies and an exe. So this is what we're using. You can be thinking, wow, Dan, uh, this is an exe. What am I gonna do an exe on a Mac? Well, I actually have Mono installed. So if I open a terminal and try, yeah, so I have the Mono installed. I probably could do this with .NET Core, I haven't tried. Uh, so happened that Mono was already on it. So I'm just gonna use that uh, to run DocFX on a Mac. So let's see, what we need to do first is initialize a new site with DocFX. So this is gonna be a lesson for me as well, since I uh, it's been a while since I actually set it up on a Mac. Um, let's see, let's go and look for a script actually. No, I can, I can run this through a command mono. And I actually have a script that I kept handy in my downloads folder. I'm gonna open it with code and let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna use this part of a handy script and I'm gonna update the path. So I'm calling mono because this is obviously gonna be piped to that runtime for 32-bit architecture. Uh, instead of relying on my home path, I'm actually going to, let's see, use docfx. Um, let's see, Mac doesn't have a shift get path, as far as I can tell. Let's see, I'm going to get info. Maybe this gives me the full path. Could be, potentially. I don't know. Let's see if I'm going to close this. Paste. Aha. Yes, it does. So I'm going to... Just delete this part here and these part here and docfx exe can stay. So uh, what we need to do is initialize a new docfx project. That's kind of how it works. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy that. And don't forget it's command C on a Mac, not control C. That's going to cancel out like I just did. So uh, what I'm going to do is see what I have, and I'm going to go to CD downloads. That's good enough. Um, I'm going to create a folder. It's going to be docfx test. So inside that folder, let's see. Docfx test. OK, it's empty folder. I'm going to paste this command. Let's see, and I believe it was init. Let's see what happens. Does the website contain API recognition from source code? Default, yes. We're not generating anything from source code. I'm actually wanna set up something to just host markdown files. It's actually a very common scenario that I've been asked just a couple of days ago. I was like, can we host markdown? I don't have source code. You actually can. We do support markdown out of the box. So I'm gonna do no. Where to save generate documentation, default site. Uh, site is fine, so I'm going to move on. Supported conceptual files could be any text files. Markdown format is also supported. So 
what we treat as conceptual is essentially articles. Anything that classifies as an article, how to, FAQ, you name it, it's essentially a conceptual article, if you will. Anything else is a reference or API doc. So that's fine. Also, you don't need to you know, set up anything custom here. What are the locations of your resource files? Uh, resources are essentially images, all the fancy GIFs that you want to set up in your folder, so that's fine. Also, uh, perfectly fine to leave default. As you can see, we're leaving a lot of default options just you know, as what they are. Specifying external API references. Uh, in case you're documenting an API and you want to resolve types from, say, newtonsoft.json, or you have something from PyPy, we don't do that out of the box, but you can have a, a dedicated YAML or JSON file that resolves it automatically for you. So also going to skip that. What documentation templates do you want to use? The default is fine. I actually have not used any custom templates myself. So, all right. So now if I do LS, I'm going to see here, I have the docfx project folder. And if I do into uh, CD docfx, uh, let's see what's in it. So we have index MD, SRC, talk YAML. So we have the, okay. So we have the basic structure and I'll explain it in a second. So if I do L, it's probably better visualizable. So docfx.json is the configuration file that we use to build stuff. This is where you go to just get an idea of how we build things in your uh, specific documentation instance. Where do we get resources? What folder do we put them? What is the URL structure for them? Uh, and so on. Index.md, just basic index file, just a starting point. And uh, talk.yaml or toc.yaml is a table of contents. You can also have markdown table of contents. YAML is a little more structured, so it's probably better for this. Let's see. So I'm going to go and get a refresher myself and see what is these scripts. So we have these mono, um, our, so this is essentially would run docfx and then it would serve the site. I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to go through the commands here. I already have docfx. So I'm just going to do this. So what this does is this will build the uh, site. So now you're going to have yourself a handy static HTML site built for you based on the content that you put in the folder. Uh, and now I'm just going to use serve site. So serve site. And what site is here, it's actually the folder in which content is being dropped. So if I'm going to go and take a look, well, it takes me a while to delete stuff, but uh, notice that there is a site folder. So the site folder was generated just now when we built the content with the docfx command. So it wasn't there before, it's there now. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is serve that site. And what this does is, oh, nope, should be underscore. Uh, this will actually bootstrap a local web server. So you can try that. I'm gonna bootstrap back to Firefox. And let's see, localhost 8080. So if I'm gonna go to localhost, 8080, well, and this is fetched directly from your docfx instance that you just ran. So to prove that this is actually the case, uh, let's go here to Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna go ahead and open the folder. And it was docfx test, we have docfx project, there is index.md, so it's a standard markdown file. I'm gonna go and open that. Uh, let's see, there's a link to daring Fireball. I did not know that was the case. So I'm going to space things out here and let's see. I'm going to add something like, um, oh, let's see. This is awesome. That is awesome. Thank. Good enough. So I'm going to save this file. So one thing, uh, I host my blog in Hugo. So the good thing about Hugo is once you save files and say you run a copy of this locally, it updates. DocFX doesn't quite have it yet. Uh, so if you know you refresh this page, if nothing actually happens because we did not rebuild the site. So I'm gonna go back to the terminal, cancel out, and I'm gonna rebuild it. So I'm gonna do another build. And then I'm gonna serve the site. So notice there's two commands that I have to run, build and then serve. And I'm going to refresh this. All right. And now we can see our text added. Simple enough, right? Uh, now let's talk about resources. This is again, continuing our brief introduction to DocFX. 
uh, let's find an image and I'm gonna go to images.bing.com actually you know what I think giphy.com probably would be best since we all love gifs uh, let's see what kind of gif do we want to get um, you know a bunch of random gifs there's I believe these are kangaroos so good enough we're gonna go ahead and save this in uh, back in our downloads we're gonna go to docfx test and we have a folder for images, right? So I'm gonna save this as, um, you know, name it as animals.gif. Good enough. So I'm gonna save that, fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna close it. All right, so now we'll go here and we have our index MD. I'm actually gonna you know, open the entire folder so it's easier to manage. I'm going to go up index MD. So I want to insert an image and I'm going to do this standard markdown format. Uh, let's say uh, images and it was animals.gif. I'm going to save that. And again, I'm going to rebuild the site, this mini site of ours. And I'm going to serve it. Okay. So if I try to refresh now, there you go. You can just as easily embed any images. So if I go back here and you look at docfx.json, that's the file that I talked about configuring the build of what gets built. You specify essentially folders and you specify the types. So in this case, content comes from articles. You can render all markdown files or all toc.yaml files. So you can have exclusion paths. If, for example, you have a markdown file that is something like instructions for writers, you can easily exclude it here with the help of exclude path because this is files. Same applies for images, resource, you know, file folders, you specify where it is. Uh, standard wildcard syntax applies and you can do that. Destination, this is obviously the folder where it uh, is being dropped and we support markdig, uh, which is the underlying engine for markdown processing. So this is simple enough intro to docfx. Hopefully this has been helpful and we'll continue this series with more detailed information of what awesome things you can do in docfx for documenting different APIs, including Python, .NET, TypeScript, JavaScript, uh, and we'll also be tackling how we can containerize this entire workflow. So thanks for watching.